Okay, so hello everyone, and yes, thanks. For, first of all, thanks, Presla, for the nice talk, <laughs> by the way. Uh, yes, okay, so uh, my talk is about controlling chatbot um, multi document navigation with the extended discourse trees. This is joint work with uh, <coughs> my colleagues uh, from Oracle and Kazan University, Boris Galitskant, uh, Alek Kirillovich, and uh, I am Dmitri. Okay, so a few words about our work and our motivation. Um, during last uh, couple of years, we are developing our own uh, tool for uh, interactive uh, information retrieval um, goal-oriented conversations with the user, so chatbot or dialog system, and it's uh, partly based on um, some ideas related with the linguistic analysis, like discourse analysis. Uh, so we found out that uh, discourse and discourse analysis, I will talk about it later, uh, it's quite, uh, is a theory and uh, tool which is quite helpful, for instance, in question answering, for the question answering component when you can match uh, candidate answers that are relevant for the user with the user's query and so on. Uh, so, but in this work, we're trying to explore an, a, a couple of ideas about how discourse can be helpful for the dialogue management. So in, in most of the modern systems, uh, dialogue systems, uh, people are trying, at least in academic uh, dialogue system, people are trying to build an end-to-end -end systems and uh, learn together uh, all the components like dialogue management, uh question answering uh text generation and so on so sometimes it can be helpful but uh we believe that for the goal oriented systems uh we should keep separate dialog management and other components because dialog management is very crucial uh for for the user to keep the user satisfied so uh in our tool we are trying to build a separate uh, component for the dialogue management and so we are using some ideas from the linguistics here. Uh, okay, so first of all, just a short um, scratch from the uh, discourse theory and discourse trees is kind of standard uh, way of representing the uh, thoughts of the writer, so some kind of logical connections between uh, different thoughts expressed in the text and uh, discourse tree is a common formalism nowadays so and one of the most popular uh, theories for representing uh, the discourse relations is uh, it's called rhetorical structure theory it had been uh, founded in late 80s by Mann and Thompson and the good thing about this theory is that a number of uh, RST parser, so automated tools for building discourse trees are available at the moment and we're using some of them. I'm talking about uh, English, but uh, these parsers are also available for, for some other languages. So this is just a small, small example. Uh, what we have actually here, so the, inside the discourse tree, the leaves in these trees, uh, they call this is uh, actually pieces of the tag of the initial text. They called uh, elementary discourse units or EDU, abbreviation for that. So, and uh, in the notes, we have different uh, examples of rhetorical relations. Like they, all of them are quite intuitive. So, it could be elaboration, which one part of the text elaborates another one, joint. It's kind of symmetrical relation which two uh, logical pieces of the text are symmetrically related with each other and some other like uh, like background or contradiction and so on and uh, interesting thing about discourse uh, trees that is um, this is hierarchical oh, sorry hierarchical structure so uh, relation could be put one inside one inside other, like here in example. So we have two elaboration one inside uh, general elaboration on the top. Uh, 
Okay, so this is kind of standard thing for the NLP. Uh, and what we are doing in our paper, we trying to extend a little bit this concept uh, because the like the main area of uh, discourse analysis is um, on the level of paragraphs. So the when you want to build a good and uh, well-established discourse tree, you should work with the paragraphs. And when you ca when you uh, when you go to the level of uh, documents one document uh, or several documents uh, discourse tree become f uh, quite inaccurate so uh, and also um, it's an interesting thing uh, can can we build it's an interesting question uh, about can we build something like uh, a regular discourse tree but for the several documents so for the several pieces of information which possibly can be related with each other but they are not inside one uh, text written by one author, but it's crucial uh, thing for uh, actually it's a crucial thing for navigating user through the relevant pieces of information. So, for instance, we found uh, using uh, information retrieval engine, we found a number of documents which we believe that are related with each other. So, when we want to combine them together to provide to the user the relevant piece of information, uh, so actually this what we are doing here. In this paper, so if we visualize that, can be look, can be uh, presented like this. So we have uh, several relevant documents with a number of sections. We build discourse tree for for each sections for for, for the each section and try and then after that try to connect them with each other, building a so-called extended discourse tree. So we're going out of the bounds of, uh, of a single paragraph. Uh, and more formally, uh, we propose the algorithm for that, uh, which is quite simple, by the way. So we're building the set of uh, discourse trees for each paragraph, and after that, iterate through all paths. So we try to connect with each other uh, each uh, pair of sections from the initial doc from the initial from the initial set of the documents. Uh, we identifying noun phrases, named entities in these uh, pieces of text. After that, we're computing overlap and identify common entities between these discourse trees, these two texts. Uh, after that, we establish relationships between occurrences of the entities, such as equals, sub-entity, part of. This can be done by using background ontology or by using some patterns. Uh, there is a number of, of approaches here. After that, we we try to confirm to validate these relationships by forming text fragment, merging uh, together these two pieces of information, uh, and for that we applying a standard coreference tool. So we uh, we imagine that these two pieces of text are actually single text, and uh, trying to uh, extract references. This is the validation step. After that, after if the validation uh, is successful, we are forming an interparagraph inter uh, rhetorical links. So we add uh, new rhetorical links uh, and forming the extended discourse tree for each entity pair uh, occurrence in, in the initial text. Uh, and after that, uh, the last part, the last step here, we try to classify rhetorical relations. So we have at this step we have uh, established rhetorical link, but we still don't know what is what type of the link is is this. So we we need to we need to uh, identify the uh, particular type of rhetorical relation, uh, and we're doing this by forming a text fragment. So we merging again the, the for, for the second time we're merging two pieces of text together, building discourse tree and. Uh, using the recognized uh, relation label for that. Uh, so, for instance, if we have uh, like um, one of the example where it can be helpful, we have the um, we have the uh, for instance the user query and three relevant documents about faceted search, entity extraction, and information retrieval. <coughs> retrieval. <clears throat> Sorry. So, uh, for instance, user is asking a question. What is faceted search? Very simple question. Uh, we explore the content 
uh, and find and find the document faceted search. After that, we're building multiple discourse trees and forming forming the following items for the content exploration based on the extended discourse tree for for the three documents: entity extraction, information retrieval, and so on. So, user is choosing one of the options. That's like a simplified example here. Uh, chatbot proceeds to the next to the uh, next iteration, discovering the phrases from the uh, satellites, so from the rhetorical links, and corresponding to the entity extraction, entity recognition, information retrieval. So here we're jumping to the different document, uh, to the information retrieval document. So if users will select uh, information retrieval, we will uh, proceed to the uh, to this document and will provide he, uh, to him the uh, relevant piece of information. So it can be like visualized like here. So we're jumping between the documents, trying to combine uh, relevant pieces of information. So it can be seen um, on the on the top level. It can be seen at the as the uh, tool for entity linking. Uh, well, we also did some preliminary evaluation. Uh, a little bit simplified. Uh, so we actually compared this, uh, the two searching strategies using the chatbot and using uh, search engine. So what is better to try to do all by yourself or try to interact with the chatbot? Uh, and we evaluated like some um, standard metrics like average time and number of iterations uh, before user is satisfied or before user is uh, and the session because he's dissatisfied and average time and number of iterations so query like we, we the n number of users were discussed the with the chatbot and with the uh, search engine uh, some topics on the personal finance so we compared the results and uh, like luckily the <laughs> The chatbot uh, was uh, more uh, more satisfiable, more successful uh, in this setup than conventional web uh, conventional web search. But this is a kind of preliminary evaluation. Uh, well, I also want to share another idea of uh, using discourse tree. So, in case we we do combine the uh, several documents in, uh, into one. So what we can do for, uh, to um, force the user uh, to navigate through different aspects of the single topic. So it, what, what we can do in case we want the user to explore the topic uh, to the end. So uh, in this case, this course tree can also be helpful very helpful and we also can use some simple um, simple but more or less effective ideas um, okay so formally speaking let's imagine that we have some text uh, describing the initial topic we will have the example later uh, so t this text is given we will we start with the introduction uh, and the main statement uh, extracted from this text then the user can choose some of the following options related with the exploring the topic. Ask for more details about introduction, disagree with the main statement, or ask a question on the topic outside of the scope. So we, we are using a discourse tree of the initial text for all of these cases. If the user asks for more details, we try to provide the piece of information that elaborates initial initial statement. We're using the uh, rhetorical relation elaboration. If the user disagrees, we try to find the pieces of information that explain or uh, that explain somehow the uh, the main statement. Once again, we use the uh, special type of rhetorical relation. If the user asks a different question, then we try to uh, answer this question. But still, we we are trying to keep. Uh, to turn user back to our topic, uh, uh, putting the uh, some piece of information that elaborates our initial statement 
at the end of the uh, bot's answer. Uh, and uh, another option, if the user doubts about the validity of a claim, then we try to provide some additional information, some additional attributes of the of this claim to make user believe that this claim is can really be true. Uh, okay, can skip this. Uh, so and like the last thing, the small example of uh, exploring the topic. So we have the some initial text about uh, coronavirus from from BBC. So uh, we can build the uh, discourse tree. This is the example of the discourse tree with the different uh, rhetorical relations. And that's the discussion with the, some technical details marked with blue and green. So bot is making the initial statement. China has rejected calls for an independent international investigation into the origin of the coronavirus. User is asking, why would they do it? Don't believe that. So bot is detecting the doubt uh, about main statement. It's trying to find the attribution uh, for the uh, for the statement China has rejected. And uh, he did find this, according to BBC. So Bot is answering, this is according to BBC. User is asking again, are politicians involved in this? Bot is searching for uh, tokens in uh, elementary discourse units and found the, to uh, the, uh, uh, the piece of text uh, the demands were politically motivated. Uh, this is the answer. User, why is that? Bot is detecting a uh, request for explainability, looking for explanation, a rhetorical relation inside the discourse tree. Uh, so the explanation of why of uh, the demands were politically. So why is that? Uh, the answer here: a top di uh, top uh, diplomat in the UK, Chen Wen, explained the BBC. And so on. User, who is Chen? Uh, who is Chen Wen? Uh, uh, so this question is about an entity from the answer, but foreign to the thread. So search. Uh, so user. Oh, sorry. So bot is trying to search on the web, and then continue <coughs> navigation through the initial text. So uh, Chen Wen is uh, somebody. This uh, the bot found the piece of information in Wikipedia or somewhere, but after that. The bot adds <coughs> uh, another um, text trying to turn the user back into the initial conversation. So uh, the bot is adding, noting, uh, notice also that uh, that somebody would divert China attention from fighting the, the pandemic. So this, is, uh, this piece of information is from the initial text. <coughs> so using is returning to the initial conversation. And how can countries tackle coronavirus? Uh, so bot is uh, looking for the explanation, cause, means, and other rhetorical relations, and uh, finding the fragment uh, from the discourse tree here in green, uh, mar marked with green. So he answers, European Union believes that information about how it initially spread could help countries tackle the disease, and so on. So this is the actual conversation. It's a bit longer, uh, so can be um, it can be continued. So finally, the user is exploring the topic uh, in in all details. Uh, okay, so conclusions uh, about what we did. Um, well, the main our main idea was that the dialect management is a crucial part of the conversation. So it should be treated separately from the other components. Of the dialogue systems, and it should be uh, controlled somehow, probably by some uh, heuristics or handcrafted rules. And we did this. Uh, we did an attempt to control the dialogue management by using some simple uh, ideas from the uh, discourse analysis. So we tried to use somehow the initial text structure. Uh, and we also did some preliminary revelation on that, so and found out that yes, somehow it, it it's useful and uh, it, it's worth to to be continued uh, here because 
th th this idea is quite simple and this course analysis is domain independent so we actually didn't uh, we actually don't need to have any kind of uh, external resources just uh, search engine and this course parser and we can uh, using this we can try to keep the dialect management quite uh, reasonable and effective okay so thank you i think that's it ah sorry yes what one, one yes one last thing here is uh, for those who are interested in like further reading in this area uh, my co-author wrote the huge but interesting book called developing enterprise chatbots about different ideas of how linguistic analysis can be used in the industry for goal-oriented goal chatbots and so on so there is there are many interesting things here so you can take a look if you are interested okay thanks <laughs>